And, you know, if Sword of wins this, he will get, or excuse me, if Dark wins this, he will get a thousand dollars total from the NSQs. That's absolutely That's right. insane. He <laughs> got a second before, gave him 250 bucks. If he wins here, he gets 750. A thousand total from two weeks, four di or eight days That's of playing. I, I, I'll take that, man. I'll take a thousand dollars in two weeks. I'll take a thousand dollars in two weeks. Well, and uh, get to have your games casted. So it's just a pretty good deal for Dark and starting to really make a name for himself. If you're watching, you guys have the privilege of watching potentially one of the str the stalwarts of NHL Season 4. I mean, Dark, if he keeps playing like this and wins in the series, he's going to surprise a lot of people that underestimate him. And uh, so we'll find out whether he's able to really close it out now. He is the Green Zerg in the bottom right from Team Slayers. And uh, we'll find out what happens in this game on Ohana, but... For now, let's go ahead and focus on the top left player, sort of. The Red Zerg from Team Western Wolves, the Swedish player who's gone so far and played incredibly well all this qualifier long. Andre, what does sort of need to do to really climb back in this series? It's tough. I really feel like Dark has been outplaying him game and game again. Well, it's only been two games, but both games, I just feel like Dark has been the player that doesn't do anything flashy, doesn't do anything outstanding, just makes the right decisions every time. The choice to actually counterattack the third base, knowing that, hey, he's, as you were saying in last game, he was feigning aggression, obviously not uh, looking to actually commit fully, knowing his opponent would drone up behind that. And then once he actually established some sort of foothold at his natural, said, hey, these Zerglings are a little bit expendable. I can go send them away. He went and took that advantage, took out the third base, and then what does sort of actually have as an advantage? Not that much. The combination attack, beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. I, I feel like sort of needs to, if he wants to win this series, he needs to do something very, very tricky. Because if he keeps going to this end game stage or makes a lot of, makes it so that, there is a lot of decisions to be had, then he's going to lose every single time. I really feel like Sort of needs to play a little Bly-esque. We'll find out whether Sort of can channel his inner Bly, or he's just going to stick it out and say, you know what, it's it's game el it's elimination time, I'm just going to stick to my guns and do what I do best. And uh, we'll see what happens in Ohana. Now, Ohana, like you said, Andre, earlier in, our s in a different series tonight, you were saying uh, it, during Bly versus Dark how it's a, it's a map that you can kind of secure your natural and your third a lot easier, especially considering other maps like Cloud Kingdom where it's just a little trickier to handle all the counterattack paths. What what do we, what do you think uh, about Ohana in terms of sort of style that he's been seeing? Because we've seen Dark play on this, but what is sort of going to be able to play the same way he has with you know like the Massling, maybe incorporate some Mutas. Play pretty greedy and get that sneaky third. Is he going to be able to defend it if he chooses to do it again? Yeah, I think Spire Tech is still applicable on this map. Um, the maps that I, I would say they're not applicable on are maps like, I would say, hmm, Metropolis. Even though that sounds crazy because you don't it's like Mutas and Metropolis. I don't like Mutas oh. and Metropolis. I don't like them Mutas okay. on Antigua Shipyard either. Those, I would say, uh, triangle expansions where. You have one base actually defending another base. Uh, another similar map would be Entomb Valley, hmm. where it's very easy to actually cover all three of your bases by just covering two, so it's really efficient right, right, to defend right. against things. Well, we'll see if that comes into play at all, but you see the pretty much simultaneous builds from both players droning up very heavily, getting up their speeds and their bayonets all on one gas. Uh, gas timings are going to be very important to note. That's why it's a good time to scout right now, especially for Dark. So he wants to see if there's any kind of deviation in the build. And we see immediately a second gas being placed down. And, uh, you know, in this in this scenario, as just sort of, as he is going for a quick layer once again, do you, do you cheese, Andre? Or do you try to go for, like, heavy aggression? But I, I, don't, I don't know what sort of really planning in this scenario. You know what stuff... If, I mean, obviously, I'm a very different player than him, I would actually just take this opportunity to um, really take advantage of the fact that Dark is just such a great macro player and a go in that style. But, I mean, if you are playing to win, maybe you do want to do that, but I really feel like uh, putting it up to chance that obviously you're all in works and against a player like Dark that has basically scouted you out completely I really feel like there's no real capabilities of exercising any particular all-in. He's just going to continue on and uh, try to do something a little bit trickier later on. We're going to see. He does need to do something tricky, though. I feel like going into um, 
going into just end game standard play with someone like Dark is a losing line. It's weird to say that. It's just Dark has a better strength over there. And that's why we see the Spire going up like yet again, just like game number one. one. Yeah, on game number one. We'll see whether or not it's going to it's gonna work out for sort of favor. Guys, if you're just tuning in, it's 2-0 in favor for Dark in the best of five. Winner advances to Season 4 of NHL and gets $750. And, of course, the loser does get $250, but we'll have one more opportunity. I want to remind people that next week we have NSQ number four, the last opportunity for someone to get one spot because we have four invites also going out to players for NASL Season 4, and I think everyone's going to be really excited to know who the four invites are, and that's all we're going to say. Yeah. I'm really excited about I the four invites. So I, I am so happy, bro. Oh, it is nasty, let me tell you. <laughs> it's going to be great to see such high-level competitions, and that's why I'm really hoping to see players like Sora step it up, because these, these, you know, these... Europeans, these players that people don't know about, they're really Ooh. good, but they want to have a platform to ch check it out. And look at the aggression from Sword of once again picking off the Queens. He's going to oh, also trade uh, nice. pretty decently here and force a count in the third, and that's the kind of play we're looking at it from Sword of. Yeah, and normally, you know, this didn't work nearly as efficiently, but as we said, again, this is a defensive road style. Uh, as you can see, the infestation pit is being put down, so this is actually meant to take your third pretty fast. I feel like Dark doesn't really have a lot of options. He probably will go to actually pressure up, but I feel like this is ill-fated. I think sort of will be able to deal with this pretty efficiently. You can see Muta is already on the way out, but the fact of the matter is, I mean, he doesn't have uh, an advantage behind this. This third base being taken out is so, so poor, and a lot of gas has already been invested into that infestation pit and the, gl the pathogen gland. That is 300 gas. You can look at that at 12 roaches, potential roaches. That is quite substantial. So this is a little bit weaker. We're going to see if Dark is able to pull it off or not. Uh, well, you do see the roaches now marching over to the third. Sort of has a lot of Zerglings in position, and he does have his queen to also add some DPS. Oh, gosh. Nice. Oh, wow. Nice around. He will probably get this third base, but at the cost of a ton of roaches. Yeah. Ferdinand, that was not worth it. <laughs> Dark is severely behind in this position. Yeah, because now his, uh, his ability to kind of call the mutas back is nothing. He, you know, it sort of can kind of continue to put on the aggression. And Dark, he's going to cancel his third. You know, I have no chance of holding it. And, you know, that's good. I mean, he's he realizes rather than trying to spend resources trying to defend, he's just going to try to sit back, tech up, get infestors out, and from there move out. Yep. Uh, this is exactly t the type of game sort of wanted. Now it's obviously with his tempo, it's his game to lose at this point. He's ahead in economy at this point, just because his third is going to be established a lot faster than uh, Dark's. Although that did happen on Daybreak, and Dark was still able to pull out on top because of his Infestor control. Um, I, I just feel like sort of he has the ability to really crush his opponent, and that's where I would go, actually. If I want to get a win at this point in time, I would actually look to see, okay, where's the trigger? It's going to be the third base goes down. As soon as the third base goes down, I have 100 seconds until that goes up, and then maybe uh, half a minute until it actually pays for itself. I'm going to hit in approximately two and a half minutes, and that's a position where you, know, you are doing a really good timing. You've been able to materialize this hatchery and really reap the benefits off it, whereas your opponent really hasn't. And uh, that's kind of what all it takes, really, the small advantages in DBZ. It's, not, it's no longer a matchup where you can just end it in one swift motion. It's got to be, well, I get an advantage through larva cycles. I get an advantage through, you know, picking off hatcheries and getting able, and able to try to deny gas. Gas is going to be so important in the upcoming minutes, guys, yes. especially as both players are powering up on upgrades and very gas-intensive units like Infestors. Now, sort of does have a, a couple things going in his favor on, in addition, like Vision. He has the ability to deny Overlords, and he's going to be able to scout any kind of counterattacks. Love his Overlord placement. That's something sort of been doing really well. And also, he's spreading his Mutas out, making sure he can't get fungals. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Yeah, he baits a couple of fungals here and there, but that's really important because if you think about it, three fungals that go down, that is extra time that you have, and especially if you're doing a timing attack. Well, one fungal growth could potentially be a fresh new infester. So you basically killed an infester by by using that, that mutilus to <laughs> needlessly fungal down one of the infestors. Or excuse me, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So that's that's really, really important. It's the uh, it's the idea of making money through saving in a way, because you know the they already invested energy, you don't have to deal with that later. And so you can see that uh, at this point, Dark is now starting to saturate his third gases, but that's he's been 
He's been not mining gas for so long and has been mining basically at 50% reduction compared to his opponent. Sort of in a very, very comfy spot. And sort of also getting up a macro hatchery. Another macro hatchery, which we all love to see. Yeah. Actually, no, just kidding. He already has a macro hatchery. He's expanded to his fourth base. Oh, yeah. oh okay. <laughs> I was like, man, he's getting another macro hatchery. Five for three bases. Andre, he's doing what you were saying. But no, sort of just boss moding and going for another expansion when he sees his opponent saturating. I don't hate that at all. I, I think that's still pretty efficient, but as we have it right now, sort of, uh, he is max at 200-200. Where are we going to see the push? When are we going to see the push, rather? And it looks like it's going to be right now. Let's check the upgrades. 1-0, incoming for both these players. And Dark is slightly ahead. Units tab shows 11-9 to nine with a slight advantage for Dark yet again. The fact of the matter is that Roach count, 23 to 37 in favor of, of course, sort of. It's because of the economic mm. advantage he's been able to uh, take this whole time. But I don't like the positioning of sort of. These roaches on this left-hand side don't really work for me. Well, also, sort of didn't actually rally all of his eggs either, so he doesn't have some of his roaches with the army. It's, uh, it's kind of scattered all over the place, unless he's deliberately leaving them back for a potential counterattack. Oh. But he may just have too many units. Dark is down in supply, but he's got a lot of infestors. Oh my goodness, does he have a lot of infestor energy, and that is textbook Dark. He's going to drop a lot of infestor terrans to try to discourage any roaches from pushing in. In fact, sort of is going to use his infestor energy just to Bungled the Infested Terrans to really keep him in place. And now we see that sort of is pressing in here. Dark Supply is still holding strong, though. He does oh have the God. reinforcement and advantage. And Dark holds. <laughs> I don't understand this guy sometimes. How does he always do this? He's so freaking good. He was able to stop that push, which doesn't make sense to me. He was behind mm. in supply. Mutas were actually attacking uh, the main while that was going on. He was able to clear all of that up. Keep a drone have advantage. Have less supply, keep <laughs> a drone advantage, have less army, and he's way ahead now. Well, no, 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 he's not way ahead, but he has Hydras out. That's so scary. His opponent doesn't, although he's making them right now. I mean, that Infestor count is still retained. Let's look at it right now. 10 to 13. He has three more than yeah. his opponent. I have no clue how Dark was able to do that. It just doesn't make sense to me. Everything was right from sort of. I guess maybe... The roaches on the left-hand side weren't really engaging as well as they could have been, but I still feel like that was negligible. It's the, uh, uh. I want to say it's the Infested Terran timing. The fact that he can get out so early, tank a lot of damage, add so much DPS initially before his opponent. And uh, it's just one of those things where you get your damage out early and you're able to really control the battle, the pace of it. Yeah. And you know what? Now we're in a position where I think Dark... Oh, Ooh, my God. Nasty fungal on a huge pack of roaches from Sort of. And Sort of now forced to engage in an awkward spot where he doesn't have a great ability to kind of set up a concave. And now Sort of is on the defensive foot, and he's lost almost oh all no. of his map control. Okay. Oh, wow. I was about to say, I was like, oh, those units are not... Oh, no, these units are not supposed to be in the top right-hand corner. That is the worst position because, yes, he's going to move around to the third base. <gasps> Froden! Oh, he sees it! Oh, this fungal on the nasty. low ground, but he might be able to land oh, nice. and completely com section off his opponent from being able to protect his third base. Will sort of be able to get down the ramp to protect his third base. He does get out some of the Hydras, but now a lot of Infested Terrans are dropping onto the field to try to push their way, and that's a lot of energy committed. Uh, Dark is going to have to slowly do this. He does try to push at the third, but he loses a lot of roaches. Good defense from sort of thus far. And man, excellent positioning and baiting from both players in the end. Sort of looks like he's going to stabilize at this point. But that was a very scary moment. Wow. Could have gone either way in the end. Sort of does hold. Although his third oh, base. Oh, he's going to lose his third base. The Infestitarians oh. are going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> and they expire right before that happens. Wow. Absolutely insane. Sort of now. He doesn't really need to do anything. You can just remake that. It just... <laughs> it just stinks for him yeah, because it's, it's annoying because like, he wants yeah. more gas. You can see that he he's floating a little bit of minerals because he wants more gas to remake stuff, but that's just inconvenient. Oh, so so funny though. Uh, that was a lot of Infested Terran energy being spent though, as you were saying, Frodan. And will Dark be ready for this incoming attack? As you can see, the Infestors for sort of are a lot healthier. They have a ton more energy, so. 
You know, it could be all the in this fight. We're going to see it right now. The Infestors aren't really getting up into the fray. Hmm. And that is significant amount of damage that's not being done in this early game stage. There are those beef balls being thrown out everywhere. Man, the Infestitarian. Wow. Is, the, the ability just to spam them out much faster than his opponent. Look at how much DPS his army does. It's sort of losing all of his Infestors as well. And Dark takes an incredible lead. GG! <laughs> And Dark is your next person to qualify for NSL Season 4, despite losing advantage after <sighs> advantage, always turning around the fights. And this is why you never try to out Infester. You go Slayer's into late Dark. game against Dark, you lose. That's how it is. That's why I was going to say, when sort of lost that big timing attack that I sh thought should have won, but I have no real reason why he did lose it, that was the game. I really feel that was the game because then it's even footing, and that's a losing line when you're up against a player like Dark. It's like me going up against Stefano and playing standard. It's a <laughs> losing line. It's uh, it's really tough because that is where he's comfortable. That's where Dark's... I mean, he didn't even have to resort to his counterattacks at this point. He tried to get positioning and sort of held really well some of the aggression from both ends. But again, the Infested Terrence, how fast he can get them out is insane. You see, it's all at once. It's not just one side. He fights on two fronts yes. and able to get the positioning, sort of not able to react in time. And uh, again, I want to say it was g small things too. Like he spread his creep just in the right position so that he can always rearrange his Infestors, save them. And over time, the retention of Dark is just able to overwhelm his opponent. I do want to mention one thing really quickly, and it's the power of defensive infested Terrans. And I think that's what actually speaks to me a lot now that I'm rethinking about everything. Um, the fact of the matter is, sort of doesn't know if he should actually use his infested Terrans yet because his opponent can back up. Whereas if you're being defensive, you know that they're going to stand there. You could place the fungals, you could place the infested Terrans, and you know they're actually going to commit right there, or you're going to have a ton of time to actually uh, get more of your army. So I feel like the defensive posture that Dark took every single time was correct. He let a little bit of space in between his hatchery and where the battle actually went. So he has that ability to fall back. And if he sees a ton of Infestor Terran being popped down um, and that's all, he can just easily back up and all of a sudden he can spend his Infestor energy a lot e better. And after our three just quick thinking. games... Well, actually, it wasn't even that quick, but no. in the end, Dark ends up victorious. He is your third qualifier. He joins Bishu and Arthur. And joining us in Season 4...